may all have a little spring fever right about now because it's going to be 72 degrees today. But waiting for this, some of those nicer days and warmer temperatures to string together. Were you reading that with a southern accent? I certainly was. All right. I don't know why. Before you get outside, though, we wanted to talk to a tick expert. <laughs> and it's really to make sure that we all know how to keep ourselves and our families safe, including our animals, too. Uh, Dr. Megan Linsky, a scientist in the Department of Entomology at the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station in New Haven, is here now with some reminders for this week's Mommy Monday. Thank you so much, Dr. Linsky, for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So I asked a dumb question during the break. I said, is there anything like a good tick? No. There's I, no good tick. There's no such thing as a good tick. They're all pretty crummy. Um, <laughs> they all carry different sorts of pathogens that can infect people and animals, both domestic and wildlife. They're... They don't really serve an ecological purpose except to be a pest. Oh. Except to be a pest, yeah. which is so strange. It's awful. And mm. what's even more scary, you're a mom, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when you have kids and you're trying to keep them safe, yeah. you know. The dogs. What, you know. And dogs. dogs you're, yeah. you know, what do you do? Like, what is the first way to combat this? So I think the biggest thing is don't be scared to go outside. The last thing we want to do when we talk about ticks and how they're kind of ramping up every year and they're on the landscape is say don't go outside um, the best thing you do is just check yourself and so that's while you're outside even in your backyard one of the highest risk areas is actually in your backyard a it lot is. of people think really? that it's that's like when you're out hiking and things like that right um, but it's actually what we call the peridomestic habitat, which is where your backyard meets the woodland edge. And so if you're just aware of that zone, we call it a high-risk zone in your backyard, that's a huge, huge way to prevent um, those tick encounters. Second thing you could do, just check yourself really, really check well. Check yourself. Like yeah. head to toe? Head to toe, yeah. Okay. So they'll start at your ankles. Um, most of these ticks, like I have up here, uh, black-legged ticks in particular, most of their movement is about two to four inches off the ground. Um, and so they like to kind of start at your boot and your ankles, or if there's like a shrub. I know it's close to uh, your knees. Um, so starting there and checking while you're out and then when you come in I always say strip down check everything for both your kids your pets yourself. Um, that's probably the best preventative measure you can do. That's really right. Uh, another stupid question here I go. No, 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 no such question. thing as a stupid question. Are ticks yeah. born with the, to the pathogens? So that's a great question. So most oh, of the ticks, oh, very, it's a very good question. Um, so most of the ticks that we have up here in the Northeast, um, they are four stage ticks. So they have an egg, then they hatch to a larvae, then to a nymph, and then to an adult. When it hatches from an egg to a larvae, at that point, it needs a blood meal in order to transition into the next life stage. Okay. And that's where they typically pick up any pathogens um, from wildlife species um, or people, that sort of thing. And so, depending on which the pathogen is. And so, the larvae, which we have up here, they're their tiniest little life stage. They won't carry anything. They don't have any pathogens, at least in this area. Um, however, the nymphal stage and the adult stage will carry those pathogens. That Isn't that people. just remarkable? Hmm. Yeah. When it comes to, um, like, preventative measures, like things like bug spray that you can put mm -hmm. on, I know that there are a lot of you know parents out there that want to go all natural. Yeah. Do we ha is DEET the most effective in combating this? Yeah. So there's a lot of different products, and you can do your own research and kind of figure out which ones have the most, the highest efficacy for repellent. Um, DEET is tends to be the one that we gravitate towards because it really does work very well. There's a lot of really great brands out there now though that have. Um, clothing that's laden with the materials, so they're mm. kind of in like an encapsulated form, so it's not directly on your skin. So for me, myself, I, I always put on um, treated socks. Those are my go-to because oh. that's where they kind of come in, right? Yeah, so, sure. Um, a product that I use um, is Insect Shield, I believe is the name of the brand, and they're fantastic. They've got a bunch of stuff. I'm not endorsed by them, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> but it's just one that I use professionally um, because I do tend to be in areas of higher risk. Yeah, and so socks are just a really easy way to kind of um, add that into your repertoire for prevention. Good to know. Uh, if you uh, see a tick and you find a tick and you pull it off here, what do you do with it? That's another great question. Um, so what we say is if it's engorged, that's when they kind of get swollen. Yeah. It means they've been on long enough to possibly be of, of, of risk to you. And so 24 to 40 hours is pretty much the window in which they can take a full blood meal and pass any pathogens to you. Mm -hmm. If you happen to pull one off that is engorged, we have this great program at the station called our Passive Tick Surveillance Program where you can actually submit your ticks there and oh, we'll wow. test them for a bunch, bunch of different pathogens for free and then we'll let you know which pathogens are in the tick. So then you can take that information to your doctor and say, hey, I had a tick on me. It turns out it was infected with Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the causative agent of Lyme disease, and then you can go from there. That's food. amazing, and it's free. Yeah. It is free. Yeah, it's a great service we have. All Terrific. right. Well, we're going to have more of this linked up on our website and the app, so you can learn more about that. And uh, we're going to head on over to the wax now. Absolutely, All I right? think the wax. All right, from the classics to today, a local.